Blog Talk Radio. Hey everybody, welcome to Kingdom Justice, and it's your host Courtney Jones speaking, and today we are back, and we're on the last teaching today on fighting uh, the spirit of folly. Now, uh, as we've been going through this uh, teaching of uh, fighting the spirit of folly, we've been, or, or if you don't know what that means, foolishness. We've been going across, we've been going across a lot of things, and God took us really deep. Uh, last teaching, uh, we went through this. And, um, I got to get these uh, recordings up on Google Plus. Um, um, I've been um, a little bit busy. I need to get them on Google Plus. Um, so people that usually come out and they check this out on Google Plus or on uh, some of the other uh, Cross TV or some of these other uh, things that uh, we're putting them on. Um, I got to be able to uh, post them on there. But we definitely got them on Facebook and these things. Every time we post them here, we usually go to Facebook, Twitter, and these things. But um, I got to get it set up for that. Um, so you can, for the people that come out for that on Google+, Plus, they like to, you know, uh, listen to it on YouTube and everything else. But um, we're on part five here. And, um, and it's been interesting. This has been interesting teaching. It's actually been more interesting living it. Uh, I pay so much attention, uh, you know, to foolishness. God has shown me so much uh, stuff that happened with foolishness, and uh, and um, how strong and powerful foolishness really is. Um, I mean, you know, a lot of times it goes. You know, we always say, look at a. We we got so many sayings for foolish stuff, and um, I think the problem is people don't think being um, having a, you know, not being spiritual. I don't think people think that's uh, you know, wise, you know, so some people think that, you know, they're living in life um, in the natural, you know, and they believe that that's wise because they have this sort of wisdom or to a nature or whatever. And uh, having God knowledge is not really on the to-do list. And uh, sometimes it is the way it is with believers. Believers, sometimes God knowledge ain't the number one thing on their mind. And, um, you know, it's all kind of different kind of wickednesses. Uh, and foolishness, you know. I've seen some people who uh, are foolish, and I, um, I've seen some people that's foolish. Like I've seen people who like to simplify things. You know, they love to uh, the simplify things because if they don't simplify things, really, they can't rationalize things. They're trying to do things logically, and um, I've seen people like to, they try to do what you call learn by experience. And one of the things Laban did, one of the foolish things that Laban did that this work on a person who's uh, in the natural. And so one of the things Laban tried to do, he tried to, um, it said he learned by experience. And we know learned by experience can also mean, um, you know, witchcraft and these things. But also learned by experience is also um, when a person also um, used discernment in a wrong fashion. Like, for instance, uh, if a person used discernment in a wrong fashion, that what that can happen. So when you have spiritual discernment, that's when the Holy Spirit uh, is discerning things um, to, uh, to you. He, you get understanding from the Spirit of God. Um, and some people, um, they, what they're doing is they're learning by experience. That's why, you know, they learn by experience. So they're, you know, for instance, I've seen them, like for instance, um, which we all end up doing that to a degree, uh, like for instance, we'll say most of the times you see a thousand people. And out of these thousand people, they're doing the same thing. Uh, we'll see another set of thousand people, and they're doing something different. And then we see these other thousand, and all of a sudden we break down these people. So many of them are doing the same things. We start breaking down the types. And so we'll say, well, you know what, I learned by experience. So they don't, you know, that's really what their discernment is, but they didn't trick themselves in thinking it's God's discernment. So what they'll do is they'll look for the weakness in people. They'll look for these other things. Uh, this, and this is one of the things Gerger sites I see do. People that have this Gergesite, uh, Amorite uh, kind of mentality. I mean, I am a right. I listen. A person that's a full-blown Amorite, listen. They can come into a place and they can know what a person is right off. Um, they can come into a place of you know Amorite coming. That's why they can sell stuff. Uh, you know, they can come into a place and um, you know, it's some people that you, they think that they're so smart. And I love these people here. It's these people here who think that they're they're so smart. And you run across these sort of people, like I say, learn by experience. You run across these certain people, they think they're they're so smart, 
uh, because they are looking for weakness. They're looking for flaws. They're looking for infirmities. And their whole thing is they want to be the smartest person in the room. They are they are they so scared to get they feel to get screwed over because they didn't been in the past that um, you know that they, they have this this wall up. And I and like I said, and these Amorites or spirits are so interesting the way <clears throat> they can attack a person like this because a person like that is a, they're in foolishness, but they think that they're in discernment, but they're really not. Um, they're trying to learn by experience. So all you have to do is make them feel secure because that's the whole thing. They're like that because they don't need, they need to be secured. And so all, all Amorite does, spirit does, is make them feel secure, make them feel like they ain't got some little control, make them feel like this is that, and make them feel like they are actually the one, the smartest one in the room. And that's what the Amorite spirit does to people like this. And you know what? Boom. Just like that, that person ended up getting themselves screwed over, tricked, deceived, everything. Because that's what they got to understand. Because you know what? They were trying to do what you call learn by experience. And they thought, they may have been thought they was using the Spirit of God. And they was trying to use, they was using learn by experience. So there's some of the stuff that Laban was doing to Jacob. See, he, he uh, not just witchcraft. Um, no, he was actually using tactics about learning by experience. You know, when you see a person, you say, hey, listen, um, this kind of person, this you know, he's this kind of person. Uh, he's laid back. He's this. He's that. I can see that he 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 loved it. He loved. Um, he don't he you know he don't like being inconvenienced. He loved to be laid back. He loved to this this and that. And and so you know what he's a little bit on the lazy side or such such side. So you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to make this easier for him. Uh, and that's what usually they do. You know, off of here's another person they overwhelm. So let me take some pressure off them. And so, like I said, these spirits know these things just as well as I'm saying them here now. These these spirits know these things, and they take advantage of people. And like I said, there's some people who are just so arrogant um, in their discernment. And um, really, it's not spiritual discernment. It's learned by experience discernment. And, 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 and they really believe this. And this is why it's people who, like I said, it's people who lost their jobs, people who lost their businesses, people who lost... Uh, their lives because they thought that they were smarter than these spirits. They thought they were smarter than these, these people who was governed by these spirits and, and they thought they were smarter. And these smooth, uh, you know, these smooth operators, you would say, come in and people think they were using God discernment and they were using their own learned by experience. And when they did this, you know what happened? Boom, they lost their business. Boom, they lost their house. Boom, lost their this. Boom, lost their that. Boom, lost their lives, some of them. And just like that, it happens all the time. Because people done got away from God. And they and, and what happened is sometimes, like I say, sometimes people do foolish things because they in fear. Now we know Saul. We go to let's go let's go to Saul is, is a very interesting story. Let's go to um First Samuel, First Samuel chapter fifteen, because Saul is a very interesting thing. Because see, Saul was a person who, you know, it's not that he didn't know things; it's that fear. See, fear can make a person do foolish things. Fear can make a person do some serious foolish things that they shouldn't. They shouldn't have done. They, should, they shouldn't do. They should do. But before we go there, you know, what? I want to stop by this other scripture. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. Let's go to Ecclesiastes, I'm sorry, chapter 7, 12. Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 12. Now, remember we just got through saying how people think they can use this sort of discernment, these sort of things, and there's this foolishness, and this is why they're losing their businesses. This is why they're losing um, their jobs, their houses, their, you know, even some people, like I said, lose their lives because of this foolish discernment that they believe that they have. And the whole thing of want to simplify things. When a person wants to simplify things, uh, when they want everything just simplified, you know, just right in my face, this is what this is, this is what that is, and that's all it is. And see, with God, God goes so deep that they have no idea, but they try to simplify the spirit of God and see uh, in that. And that's why it never works out for them, because they're trying to use logic, and they think that they're tapping into the spirit uh, when they're not. They're just using logic. And they're using their own discernment, not God's discernment. And they got their wives crossed. And they're thinking they're doing the right thing, but then all of a sudden, the wrong thing usually happens. 
the wrong thing usually happen. You know, it's like, for instance, when a person make a God mistake, a lot of times, sometimes when a person make a God mistake, um, like, for instance, somebody make a mistake that God actually testing a person on, he's showing a person something. Usually nothing comes from that. You know, sometimes nothing really comes from that. Um, you know, nothing that God don't fix and nothing really comes from that. That's like if I say, oh, you know what, I wasn't supposed to uh, buy three of those, and I bought three. You know, usually God didn't want me to buy three. Um, nothing seriously bad came, maybe came from that. God, I mean, uh, went back and the person took it back or whatever it is or how that may happen. Usually when people do things apart from God testing people or doing something, um, when they're trying to do things on their own, making mistakes, usually those people have big consequences, giant consequences. Um, they're seriously terrible. And see, like I said, it's, it's, it's a such thing as God, you know, think about it. How are we going to, without error, how are you going to have correction or revelation? So, therefore, certain things God do when he's training people, people are going to make certain mistakes that God knows they're going to make, and that's how that's going to happen, doing being tested in certain things. But if some people make major, major mistakes to the point where it can cost their lives, if it didn't cost their lives, it didn't cost their whole businesses, it didn't cost their houses, it didn't cost their marriages, and then see it's stuff that just happened like that, it just boom, that big, because they got so far off the path of God and they went into their own discernment, their own mind, and they didn't let fear, they didn't let fear either get in, they didn't let greed get in. They didn't let something got in, insecurity, something got in. And when it did get in, a pride, a pride, one of the number one things got in. And you know what? When they got in, boom, they start to fall so deep. And what's bad about it, if a person like that, if they did lose a lot of their stuff or a marriage or whatever, um, if they don't change and go back on the road that God has for them, they can lose even much more. So it's not like it's not something that um, they just gonna if they don't go back to God. It's not something they can just continue to do because they keep losing big. You see, they losing big because they are way off the things of God and they're walking in their own foolishness. But they think it's wisdom. So here we are. We in Ecclesiastes chapter twelve. I mean, I'm not chapter twelve, verse seven, chapter seven. I'm sorry, chapter seven, verse twelve. It says, "For the protection of wisdom." And notice it says this, for the protection of wisdom is like the protection of money. And the advantages of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to the one who possesses it. Consider the work of God. How can make straight what he, what he has made crooked? Now, what I want you to see here is that he said, for the protection of wisdom is like the protection of money. The advantages of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to the one who possesses it. And so, like I said before, a lot of times when you get these, these uh, wisdom, she even called them these simple-minded, uh, these simple-minded people, uh, these, these people who have these issues. Um, and like Saul was one of these people. And so we was going we was heading toward that, but I want to read that scripture to you. See, Saul was one of those people. You see, now you notice how wisdom protects can protect people. It can keep you um, from death. It can keep you from death and keep you from walking into things um, that you shouldn't walk into. And um, and I don't mean it's gonna keep you from death, like for instance, you, you'll never probably die and, and the body won't. No, what I mean is that it keep you. Um, It'll keep you from dying early, for sure. It'll keep you out of things that you shouldn't be in. It'll keep you from uh, being spiritually dead, for sure. But it's a spiritual wisdom here. And so this is what a lot of folks don't understand. It's a spiritual wisdom here that goes deeper. And, you know, I, I see so many people when I talk to, uh, when you talk about going deeper with God, they just, they don't understand. You know, they're, they're looking at you just weird. I just sit there, we just sit there, I mean, like the other day, I remember me and my cousin were sitting there, and you could just sit there and talk about the the, the signs and wonders that we've been seeing God been doing and, and some of the things we've been going through with these spirits. And some of these people just, just, just say, ah, oh, like they, they don't understand because those things are not working in them because they refuse to do the things that God wants you to do. I was like, for instance, it's a difference between Joshua, uh, who got into the land, uh, 
about is the difference between him who got into the land, went towards the land, and those who didn't get into the land. See, you know, there's a difference between Caleb who surpassed Joshua in, uh, in the land uh, than those guys who never, ever got into the land. You see, it's a difference between um, some people that were just uh, man of God and Paul. When Paul went further and deeper, see, Paul went to territory so deep that no one ever went to. He, he tapped into places no one did. He preached the things no one wanted to. See, that, that's, that's what I'm, it's, it's a deeper revelation. It's a deeper spiritual connection with our Lord Jesus that you can have. See, that, that's the thing um, that a lot of people don't understand. Um, and, and, and it really hurt their walk because they're trying to simplify things. Um, and, and they're trying to add their, their keep, they're trying to keep what they have. And without making sacrifice, see, that's the thing. They want to keep what they have without making sacrifice and still serve God. And we see that this is what happened to Saul. See, Saul wanted to stay king, but see, to be a king of God, he had to understand to, he had to be willing to sacrifice. Uh, he had to be willing to suffer, meaning this much, that if the people are going to come against you, say things against you, talk against you, do things against you to the nature, you have to trust that God's going to protect you and he put you there as his king. And you got to be willing to suffer the really cute of what people are saying, what they're going to do to you. You got to be willing to go through it to be God King. Um, but Saul, he, he, see, he didn't like um, those people talking against him. He didn't like people talking against him. He didn't like feeling the people was going to rise up against him. Uh, he was in fear. Uh, and he was in fear. I'm going to tell you one of the things he feared more than somebody hurting him. Saul had his own agenda. And see, this is what you see with every person. You know, you keep saying, why they don't want to go deeper, God? You know, I remember asking God, I said, why do some of these people don't want to go deeper? Why they want to just simplify things and live this simplified life? Why they running from judgment? You know, I see people, you know what, when you start to speak judgment from people, people separate from you. People don't like to walk around and hear you speak judgment. When you start speaking judgment to people, it hit them like a ton of bricks. It's one thing I do know, bricks will come down on them because the fact of the matter, they're not walking the way they should walk. And so when the Holy Spirit speaks to a person, um, they're, they're like, hey, what's, what's going on? Hey, you supposed to did that six months ago uh, with God. Why haven't that got done? Now, see, notice God, God is telling that person that that person know, but when they hear God using the person tell them, they're getting frustrated. They're getting mad. When they hear a person telling them, hey, you know, you're supposed to let that go. Why are you still into that? It, 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 it's bothering them, you see. Um, it's bothering them, you see. And you start to do that, and it's like tons of bricks. This is why people can't. This is why people can't take Paul teachings. Um, you know, I, I, sit, I sit there, and I remember when when, uh, when I first got into God, I was used to read Paul teachings as well as everyone else. I read his teachings. I say, man, Paul teachings are hard teachings. I, um, it used to frustrate me. And um, I say, this is some hard teaching. So I asked the Holy Spirit one day when I first say, listen, uh, if you really want me to learn this, you got you gonna have to tell me what this is because I. This is frustrating teaching, and he showed me why it was frustrating. First, he took me back to a lot of stuff that well, Paul got a lot of things from, and he was showing me the mysteries of Paul. Paul spoke in a mystery, and also Paul spoke judgments of God. And see, by Paul being such a judgmental, he's apostle, he was such judgmental, um, everything was judgment, 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 judgment a lot of times. So when he spoke like that, uh, it would cause people to have, you know, it would frustrate people. Because it would frustrate people, and it was not also it makes people, like I said, it would frustrate people, it would drive people mad, it would drive people crazy, it would irritate people, give people probably headaches. I mean, you name it, it would do this to people because those people that it was doing it to, they did not like judgments. Now, notice that Paul's judgment wasn't going to go deep as God. That shows how strong God is about this. Well, Paul went deep as who knows, and you know, who else knows how deep he went. Unless, unless God's going to work you to go even deeper, which I'm not surprised if he do that. And so Paul went so deep with it. And so that's why he went so deep with that to the point where this is why people wanted to stone Paul after preaching to him or, or people was offended. It's like Jeremiah. Jeremiah can speak this uh, this judgment. He would speak this way to people, the judgment of God. Some of them were so strong. Even Jeremiah was so, you know, when coming out of him, he was like, he couldn't believe it. You know, he was in awe. He was in fear of, I can't believe when I'm speaking out of me. And so these judgments were so hard and so powerful. Um, it would do that to a person. And so people wanted to hurt Jeremiah. They wanted to hear up and shut him up 
They wanted to separate themselves from Jeremiah. Get away from me, Jeremiah. That's why Jeremiah's family even to the point of detachment. And then they wanted to do wicked things to him. But like I said, th these are things that happen because the judgment of God go forth. And a lot of people forget the judgment of God. See, they read the stories of God. They can read the Bible. They can know a story of Abraham, Jacob, uh, Saul, Laban, uh, Daniel. They can know these stories. And then they come up with what the logical, the logical things of what it is. But, but the spiritual meaning behind these things, they never usually get, and they don't get that sort of wisdom because they want to simplify things. they got to be simple. You see, and this is why people like that, they'll fall real quick to just, just give me a logic. So they, they'll fall real quick to just give me a logic. And so they'll be trying to find a revelation through just something that's simple, the logic. Just give it to me. But spiritually discerning, they don't want to do. You see, they're just trying to sum things up. They want to make summaries. And this is one of the foolishness that goes on with people. And it becomes this blindness. Um, it's this blindness that they have. And it's really wicked because they don't even know that they have this wicked blindness. And they'll start making up excuses um, in this. It's like Saul. Saul was making up, and we in uh, chapter 15, uh, first Samuel chapter 15, but Saul was making up excuses. Uh, you know, he was saying, oh, no, I did what God wanted me to do. Oh, I see he making up all excuses when he know. Okay, he knew, he knew the truth. He knew the truth. When it was all said and done, he came out and said the truth. He said, okay, listen, I was afraid of the people. Now, notice it said the Amalekite was around. Notice it said the Amalekite was around. It said that the Amalekite was around. He was supposed to kill King Agag. He didn't. Now, a lot of people don't pay attention to these things. So what happens? They don't know what Amalekite is. They don't know what the Amalekite does. So when they don't know this, they're already probably possessed by this thing. This is why they walk in this kind of manner. But but you can't tell that person that because they see. And they see, I see simplified. I see what it is. I see that. So what the devil do? He comes in, do the same thing the salesman does. He comes in, uh, he makes you feel uh, okay. He makes you feel relaxed. He makes you feel like you are in control. You know what's true. Here's what's simplified. That's the way you like to eat your food. Here it goes. You got it. And then that, and then when they think that's what it is, guess what? They are getting fooled. They have been fooled, and they'll stay fooled. For the rest of their life, they'll be fooled and just get more foolish. And see, that's what happened to Saul because it was a component. It was a component here. Saul was in fear. But the question is why he was afraid. Was he afraid people were going to kill him? Not, no, not exactly. See, it's more than one way to kill a person. It's the same thing Aaron had. Where he wasn't just so so much of being afraid of being stoned, he also was afraid of losing his livelihood. See, his life, his livelihood. Um, he wasn't going to be in power. They was going to put him in power. That's what he really wanted. That's why he wanted to be over Moses. So they was actually putting him in this position. Um, he could be. You see, he could be, uh, and they was going to take him out that position if he didn't create this calf for them. Um, and they, they, he gave them what they wanted. Now, same thing with Saul. This is why Saul sinned, because he ended up caving in and giving the people what they want because he was afraid that the people was going to turn against him, not just to kill him, but to strip him of his kingship. And he was too busy building a monument of himself. See, people sometimes have other agendas that they have inside their heart. You see, you got some people, they just lazy, you know, they just they got a lazy agenda when it comes to God. And when it comes to God, it's like, okay, listen, I got to do this in my life. I got other things in my life with God, uh, working with God, how I'm going to do this. I want to do this. I want to do that. And then sometimes, they, you know, and when they working with people, uh, like, for instance, you're working with someone, that's like I mean, you, any, any business, when you're working with someone who got all these other agendas, and no one likes to work with a person who expect more out of a person. You see, if you more than you want to give. And see, that's how it is sometimes. Some people don't like working with people who are uh, asking more of you than what you really want to give. Um, and sometimes people don't like that. You know, they look at that like, hey, man, listen, um, they're moving too fast. They're, 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 they want me to do too much. Uh, they want to pull me in. How are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? Them. See, they, they they want to pull people in so deep sometimes. Uh, I mean, they want to like you know they they, they feel people people want to pull them in so deep, uh, and and this is their mind state a lot of the time because the truth is they really don't want to put in the effort. So the thing is that well, what if this did happen this way? 
What if that did happen that way? What if that happened that way? Then that means that I'm going to have to really do some work of God. And they really don't want to do no serious work of God. You know, so the thing is, it's much easier for me to play a smaller role and just do what I'm normally doing in my life instead of doing what God really wants. And this is why Paul had a problem with Mark. See, Paul had a problem with Mark because Paul said Mark didn't have what it takes uh, in the faith because, see, Paul expected much more from him. He expects a sacrifice. He expects the same dedication. He did. He's the same suffering. You see, he expected he was suffering. Therefore, Mark should suffer the same suffering. He had to go through the faith. He expected him the same thing. He had to pick up the cross. He expected the same thing out of Mark. You see, he was accepting the same thing. Uh, he wanted to surround himself with these sort of people. This is this is what he was his expectation was. It was either you're going to do it or you're done, you know, or, or, or you you move around. So I mean, this is what he was expecting out of him. He he was expecting for him. Now that don't mean that he didn't have some patience with him. That don't mean he didn't have such certain things. But in the same token, he expect a higher level uh, of commitment. You see, of commitment than Mark was willing to give at the time. Then Mark was willing to give at the time. And so that's what one of the problems that he had because he was expecting, uh, he didn't expect for the guy to know everything overnight, but he was expecting the termination and the same zeal that he had. He was willing to pick up the cross um, to, to give everything up. He was expecting the same exact thing. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that because Jesus was expecting the same exact thing from the disciples. He wanted them to do the same thing, same thing. He told anyone that followed me, you gonna have, he expect the same expectation. Pick up the cross, pick, drink, pick up the cup, follow me. So he expect that kind of expectation from a person. Um, he expected that from you. He wanted you to, to, to try. He wanted you to go forward. He wanted you to be committed. He wanted you to put your, you know, uh, put, put him over your mama, daddy, job, business, wedding, uh, marriage, whatever. He wanted to be, he wanted to be your number one priority. And a lot of times people say this all the time. God's my number. No, he ain't. No, he ain't. If you spending more time with everything else than God, he ain't your number one priority. You see, it's, yeah, it's just what it is. You see, if you're still walking in foolishness, do you know what? Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. You see, it just, um, they need to quit making up excuses. Well, I'm still watching stuff I shouldn't watch on television uh, because uh, by now uh, I done made up some kind of excuse to keep watching stuff that I know God would not watch this stuff. I know that this is horrifying stuff to uh, to be watching, but I'm still holding on to this. I'm still holding on to this, you see. And this is why Paul said, this is why Paul said, you know, me, I put under my body so therefore I can preach things like this. You see, I can preach these sort of things uh, because, you know what, if you, you know, that's why I tell people, you know, if you ain't, if you ain't, you know, that's like me, um, you ain't watching that kind of stuff. Then you know what, I can preach about it. But if I'm watching it, then I can't preach about it. But I, I can preach about it because I ain't watching it. See, I can preach about it because I'm not, I'm, I'm not sitting up here running to, from God at work. I'm running to more work. I, I, you know, I, you know, that's how it is. Um, I'm not running from the war. I'm not putting uh, a job over God. I'm not putting um, um, family over uh, over God. Uh, you see, that, that's not happening. God is first, literally, and that's what's going forth here. God is first. Before me, God is first. See, I'm not. I'm. Uh, I'm. You see, I'm not looking at me. I'm. I'm putting God before me. See, He's first. My destiny is His hands. I'm putting Him first. You see. And, and that's why a lot of people don't want to be in that vulnerability. I see people like that. They want to serve God and not and never feel vulnerability, but they want to make up vulnerability because in their mind they want to create scenarios. Like, hey, you know what? You can always lose your job. Hey, you can always uh, lose your house. So they want to create things so they can keep on doing things. like the rich man. Well, you know what? I'm depending on you, Jesus. I can give everything up, but why should I give everything up to follow you, Jesus? I mean, think about it. I can always just lose my riches somehow. So I have to trust God that I can keep my riches, right? And Jesus said, that wasn't a good enough answer. Jesus wouldn't want that. 
Jesus say, no, give it up and come on. See, that kind of commitment there, people don't want to give. You see, that kind of commitment people don't want to give. You see, give, give, give up that riches, give up that, uh, that security. See, you securing yourself in other things. Uh, let God be your security. Let God be your safety net. See, those are the things that people don't want to do. They don't want to be in vulnerability. And this is the reason why they lose in their business because you know why? Uh, because of the fact that their fear had caused them to get off the path that God had set for them. Their fear caused them uh, to, to lose their marriage. You see, because they were so afraid that if I didn't do this and I didn't do that, and they felt they, uh, they pride got in the way and their fear, and they were so afraid that I need to do this. Hey, maybe we need to get a counselor. Hey, maybe we should do this. Maybe, maybe, maybe I should be more in control of this so it won't happen, and it happened. You see, I remember God was saying um, to the chief, saying to trees where about, you know, being in the army of God, God was saying to them, hey, uh, listen, give me your widow. See, notice this, trust me with your widow. Trust me with your kids. See, trust me that I will take care of them. See, you got some people out there, they can't do that. See, when people simplify things, people walk in and fear like Saul. See, trust me that I will protect you. You see? Uh, same thing with Jacob. Trust me that I will protect you from Laban. But see, you have some people that don't do that. So they got to simplify things because they want to kill on the things still. So they want to say, hey, listen, uh, hey, you know, I mean, the world is an evil place. So the fact of the matter that, you know, we exist at all uh, is God. So, I mean, you know, so that sounds pretty good, don't it? Okay, now I can go out and keep doing what I'm doing, living my own life, and I can hang on to that. And so notice that they're saying that so they can be a safety net, so they can still do what they do without God, you see. And I love when people do stuff like this, you know, uh, this here. This is this is saying they always do. Hey, listen, uh, you know, uh, I, pray, I pray, I love this. They say, I pray for God to take care of something for me. Like for instance, uh, you know, most people, to most people learn these revelations, uh, you know, that someone can give them, you know, elementary revelations, but these are serious things that a lot of people do learn. And I noticed that you see a lot of religious people, people that have turned to religious do this. That's like, for instance, people say, Hey, you need to pray your way. Um, pray your way. One thing about us, we, we, everybody know you, well, everybody want to pray their way. Everybody want to pray their way. If there's anything like God, go before me, pray my way. Everyone wants to do that. Everybody wants to do that. I mean, that's something that, that's revelation, I think, should most basic. Uh, that's a basic revelation that most people, I'm saying basic, like something that everybody should know. You know, it's, uh, everybody should, or believers should definitely know that. The problem is when a believer wants to send God in front of him, but he don't want to follow God. See, it's like, God, listen, I want to send you out before me before I go do anything uh, uh, today. But they don't want to say, God, listen, um, let me make this day about your glory. See, make this day about your glory. Not just send, not just God go before me to open doors or go before me to keep me safe. No, God, listen, I want you to put me in situations to, 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 to get your glory. You see, I want you to use me today. I want you to I want you to use me today. I want you to put me in the right places today. So therefore I can uh do your will. I can do your work. You see, they don't want to do that. They just want to say, God go before me, open the door, uh do that. So therefore I can be safe so no one can maybe hurt me or do me in or maybe this will happen. But they don't look at God, you know what? Let this day be about you and your glory. Put me in a position to meet somebody today, to, to, to share our Lord Jesus with. Um, let me do your will today. See, they, they don't want to commit to that, but they hold on to just that part. And that's what a lot of them want to do. And then you sit there and say, hey, listen, hey, brother, what, uh, what you supposed to be on this project, brother? And they sitting on it. Hey, brother, wasn't you supposed to be starting that, that ministry? Sitting on it. Hey, brother, when are you supposed to be building that church? Sitting on it. Hey, brother, when are you supposed to go and, 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 and be preaching to uh, this here? Sitting on it. When are you start, supposed to start that after school program? Sitting on it. But every day they, God, go before me. God, go do this for me. God, do that for me. And that's foolishness. That, that becomes foolishness. 
because you didn't took something like we were somewhere yesterday when you or when you when you misusing the sheep mean the word you didn't took it and you just use it for your own purposes instead of trying to take it and use God purposes and just think well in that case let God do it and let God try to figure something out to do this and if I have no choice and I'm just there maybe I would do this no no, no. see ask for it see not God just go before me but how God can I do your will today. How can the glory, how can you work through me, God? You know, how can I be fruitful uh, for everyone else? You see, if you want to come on to me, how can I draw these people in? God, bring me this anointing. God, let me, uh, I don't care where I'm at. Um, see, this is a different level. This is going deeper. See, this is what a lot of these simplified men or women of, of God or people don't understand. It's about God getting his glory. And you're supposed to be an instrument of this, a vessel. They'll sit there and say, oh, well, you know what? You got to watch what you eat. You got to watch this here. And, and, and these are the same people, watch what you eat or watch this here or, or, or this, this, and that. But these are a lot of times them the same kind of people that don't want to say, God, what, today, I, you know, let me go out and get your glory. Work me out today. Put me in somebody's life. Let me do your will. I know you've been wanting me to do this. Let's get it done. See, they, they don't want to do that because that's an inconvenience on my life. That's something I want to do. But it's cool for me to sit back and keep on lying to myself to say, go before me. See, it's all about me. Go before me and open up this for me because I know the world is evil. I know the world is full of Nebuchadnezzar. The world is full of uh, 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 of of, of uh, Bar Barabbas and the world is full of Jezebels and the world is full of Balaam's and the world is full of Satan's and, and, and Laban's and Pharaoh's I know that so protect me from them but, I, but, but really I don't want to get your glory for you today I just want you to get me through today and make sure I'm alright and help me prosper because, you know what, it's some suffering out there. And like I said before, people have put themselves in position where they want to use world suffering with God suffering. And this is foolishness here in itself. Well, they want to use world suffering. Like, you know what, I'm, I'm, a, black, I'm a black male in a country that uh, I may be a sec, feel like a second or third class citizen, and everybody shouldn't, everybody... Uh, at a certain level on top, make it so hard for me uh, with this and that and this and that. Well, me being that race of person, therefore, being me being that race of person, therefore, by being this race, uh, I'm behind enemy lines. So I, I need God to do anything in that situation. So that's what they look at suffering as. Well, 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 they don't look at suffering as, okay, pick up your cross and follow me. See, that, they don't look at that. They don't look at suffering, well, you need to put down those bad habits that you know that's not of God. They don't look at, hey, you need to do this. You need to, you need to get deeper into God. You need to seek God's glory. You need to get into the spirit and stay in the spirit and walk in it. They don't look at that and the suffering it's going to take to put away those things. To, 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 to say no to self and go into God. They don't look at the suffering of what people are going to do when you get to that level. They don't look at that suffering because they did was walking in the spirit. They would not even care what Laban do. They wouldn't care what Pharaoh do. They wouldn't care what none of these people are trying to do. They wouldn't even look at themselves even as a race. They wouldn't look at themselves even as a race. I tell people all the time, to truly serve God, you got to throw that ethnic stuff in the trash. I don't care what people try to bring to you. You throw it in the trash. Jesus never let people bring him down to, to you just this Jew. We are Roman. He never let that stuff get to him. He is second class. He never let people bring him down. Pharisees want to bring him down. You ain't this. You. He never let them people bring him down. He was operating on another level. And see, that's what's wrong with a lot of these people when they start talking about uh, you know, this, the race is holding me down. Hey, hey, I'm a woman, so I can't get nowhere because the men hold me. See, all the spirit of God.
to the kingdom where none of this matters. Yeah, people are going to say stuff. Yeah, people are going to try to close doors. But just like you pray to prayer to open doors, you know, God can open the doors. But like I said, they, 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 they say these things and they sit back and they look for the, the negative and everything. And they look at for the, like I said, a simple, mind, uh, a simple person is what wisdom call them, a foolish person. They sit back and look for weaknesses in people. You see, they're looking for infirmities that they're looking for in people. You see, oh, look at this guy. He's he's that he he ain't got that and he's that and and and, and by looking in the firmities and that person they'll never get surpassed anything. That's why Jesus' brothers couldn't 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 follow him. You know, at that time they couldn't follow, couldn't serve him uh, because they seen the infirmities in him. They seen oh you you my brother and if you did have that problem or or this or whatever they was looking for. See they 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 seen the infirmities. They seen the little the, the little problems that that you know, and, and those things cost them a relationship with God manifested in the flesh. That cost them the relationship of our Lord Jesus, our Christ, our Messiah. They, that 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 they 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 lost time in Him because of that foolishness. Because they looked at the infirmities of the flesh. They looked for this here or that there or some form of weakness. And they never seen what was in him. They never seen the God potential that was manifested in him. And therefore they, they, they couldn't be blessed. And so therefore they still walk around in foolishness. They walk around in foolishness and see, this is, this is some of the things that goes on that like Saul was dealing with. See, he had this fear and see, he had this fear of things. Uh, he, I was, I'm afraid that the people are going to do this to me. See, if, if, I, if, if, if I lose the people, then I can't be the king I want to be. I can't have that monument. It's going to be hard to have a monument when nobody wants to sit there with me and put me on the monument. No one want to raise me up, you know, lift me up like that. We got a problem. It's some people sometimes, man, they're so controlling. And see, this fear becomes, like, like for instance, some people, and this fear becomes so controlling in them. They're so afraid to lose. You know, it's people where they're so afraid to lose. It's like, listen, let your son, let him do what he needs to do. But it's some people, they're so afraid. They're so much in fear. Because, oh, they, what if they do this and they mess up? And what if they do that? It's people like that with their wives and husbands and their wives. This is why I always say family. This is one thing people say. When people have a, a church or a business or anything with family, these are these are issues people are definitely going to have. You see, husband want to open up a, a business or, or open up something if that's what God told him to do, first of all. Second of all, if God didn't, then he, gonna have, he, can, have, he can have some issues anyway. Um, but the person go do it, and then, the husband opened up, and then the wife said, well, you know what? I think I'm smarter than him. I think he got too many infirmities, weaknesses. So, therefore, I'm going to have to watch him because I know if I don't watch him, then he's going to lose. Then, you know, he's going to end up messing up, and somebody's going to take advantage of him, and he's going to get messed up. So what happened? Well, she get involved. Well, guess what happened when she get involved? Now, she have no, she know nothing of what this is, but, but she's so afraid that she have to get involved. Because she's afraid I'm going to lose. And he's going to lose and I'm going to lose. And then what happened? Well, say for her, she get involved. All of a sudden, the business go down. And then the business go down by decision she was making as well. So you say, well, how? What happened? The business gone. It went down. Well, notice that I thought you thought that you was going to come in. She thought she was going to come in and help it from not doing that because she was the smart one or the one that was secure. She thought she was going to do it. Instead of leaving that to God and say, listen, I'm going to trust God with that and let my husband do what he's going to do with God. No. See, I'm going to butt in. I'm going to be the one. And you know what? Boom, it fell. And you know what? It'll fell again. If you do it again. Same, it's vice versa. And say the woman did the same thing and then here come the man. I got to watch her, man, because I don't watch her. She's going to mess up. Listen, you need to be going out doing the work of God. 
You need to be going out doing something else, dealing with God. Well, I need to watch her because she's going to screw up. And if she messes up so bad, then you know what's going to happen? I'm afraid. I'm in fear. And now, see, that, that, that's foolishness. is going to come up with this logic that you think that you are smart enough to do this. And you have no idea what you're doing or who you're dealing with. Or, or, you, or you weigh out your feel. You weigh out your feel. You weigh out your atmosphere. But you're using foolishness to think that you can hang with this and I can do it. See, she's going to need me to kick the wolves off. She's going to need my discernment. My, my, my discernment is supposed to be spiritual, but it ain't. It's, it's logic. It's learned by experience. And then you walk in there with one of these, these Amorites spirits that you choose not, to, choose not to hear about or know about because you too won't simplify answers and simplify things. You choose not to learn about these spirits like this, and you walk in there, and you got somebody to smooth talk you into losing losing your shirt. See, this kind of stuff, foolishness can happen to people. It can cost you your business, your house, your marriage, your life. Being this simple-minded fool. I mean, just foolish. Just being this foolishness. This simple-minded foolishness can cost you your life. Just because you got this fear. Instead of putting it, instead of giving it to God and letting him say, let her have that. Let God, let God work that with her because this is what she wants to do. Let God do this. You take your hands off and trust God. Notice that, she, notice that you fail anyway when, you're in, when you got involved and the same thing vice versa. When she got involved, failed too. Probably failed quicker than you did before. Failed just as fast. Had just as more problems. And these are the things that people got to understand when they, the spirit of foolishness is not joking with people. They're accepting this stuff in. They're being deceived, and they're thinking that there's something more than what they are, thinking that they have the discernment of God. They ain't not using the discernment of God. They're using learn by experience. And then they come and find out somebody else that was better than them, smarter than them, and rob them of their shirt, rob them of their marriage, rob them of their life. Because they learned, they, they, they was on another level of learn by experience. And they just seen people like you many a times. And you got away from God. And then you lost. And that's what happened to Saul. Saul had fear and his agenda that he had in his heart. So he got away from what God called him for. And he didn't let this foolishness, he let a Malachite spirit blindness, he let them deceive him and manipulate him to his foolishness. It turned into a knowledge that he had, and he's operating his foolishness. And then people sit back and say, oh, man, let's, uh, I can always get married again. I mean, I, I can always have another, another child. Maybe I, I maybe can open another business. You know what? The same thing will happen to you again because you do not learn anything. All you're doing is just setting yourself up for another heartbreak, another failure, because eventually you're going to go back to the same foolishness and, and not learn by experience. And, you, and that's what you're going to go back. I mean, I'm sorry, you're going to go back to learn by experience, the same foolishness, and it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Not going to work. And that's what people don't understand. Like I said, they don't understand this, you know. Um, and, and 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 like I said, their mind state turned to this whole this outlook, you know, that their mind state turned to. Think they're trying to learn by experience, reading people and lurking at infirmities, and they forget when you're looking at infirmities like this and always doing this. What usually happens is that someone sees your infirmities, and they capitalize on yours, and that's how these kind of things happen. The same thing with Saul. When you do this affirmness, all of a sudden you're keeping that king uh, Agag alive. That king is Satan. You're keeping him alive. And see, he manipulated and you kept him alive. And all of a sudden, guess what? He lost everything. When Saul died, guess who the one who killed him? The Amalekite was standing over him and said, I told David I couldn't let him live. You see, and that's what's happened to these people. People losing their stuff and saying, I think it was God. I think it was God uh, supposed to be. Uh, helping me, and God told me this and that, and it's felon. 
Well, God didn't tell you that. You see, it's like I said, it's a certain thing that a mistake or testing that God can do to a person. Well, God can have a person uh, believing, uh, not believing, but testing them in something. And the same thing as God say, you think, well, God may say, get four balloons, but you thought he said five. You got five balloons, all of a sudden you need four. Well, you know what? Uh, that one balloon extra, it's not, a, you know, you can give it away. It's not an issue. That's how I use them when God, in person, make a mistake when he kind of lists misunderstand little things here that God or something they didn't say. That's something that can happen that's little. Something a person can just say, I mean, take away away, no, no harm uh, to a degree. Sometimes, like I say, in that situation, in that category, that may be a possibility to happen to a person. But when, when God, when, when a person totally off, when God never said anything to this person, this person, uh, God never said nothing to this person, um, this person didn't, I mean, there's nothing at all, but this person just, what the person did was they wanted to do what they wanted to do. And they just say, God told me to do it. God told me to do it. See, one thing I learned is this, when, when I remember, and see, I remember this here when I first got into God, sometimes when people don't, this is one thing I learned when I forgot to go, I had to learn God tell you things. And sometimes the first thing you do is take off running. You see, because God told you something. Sometimes you have people who try to serve God the way they do things in the world. Like in the world, I like to get stuff done. When I was in the world, something happened. I want to get it done now and get it done quick. Well, God don't work that way. Oh, you know, so, so it's like this. God showed me a vision. In this vision, God showed me, okay, you're going to be doing this. You're going to be doing that. You're going to be doing this. So in this vision, God showed me I'm going to be uh, helping the orphans. I'm going to be helping the widows. I'm going to be helping these people. And I said, okay, I know I'm going to be doing that in the vision. But God didn't tell me how long it was going to take or the process what I'm going to go in. you just seen that you're going to be doing that. So the person out there to do, they go out and start trying to do it all. They'll start trying to do them. And they'll be trying to do them because they seen God showed them the vision. Now, God actually did show them this. See, that's why I say it's a different kind of mistake. God actually showed them this in the vision of what he was trying to show them or say to them. The thing just is that person trying to help and go do it now when God did not give them the rest of the plan of how he wanted to be done. So a person trying to fulfill that. And so a lot of times people try to fulfill that and they can say, why is this not working out this way? Or why this is and that? They may not take a big loss. They just go into some frustration wonder why this is this and that. Because that's what I'm talking about. But when God completely not talk to a person, a person will completely lose seriously everything. A person can lose seriously everything. And they could be thinking that. And that's why I say some of the things people have to understand. I remember God told me one time, God said, Courtney, I want you to help the veterans. And I remember I was already doing some. And God said, I want you to help the veterans. I want you to do this. And God wanted me to do that. So he told me all those things. But when he told me, I said, oh, okay, well, let me go ahead and go do it. Let's start working on it. Let's get it done. At that time, he would say, hey, listen, I don't have the resources just to go do this right now. And we ain't got the manpower to go do it right now. But see, the vision of God showed you that, and you jumped at the vision. Because he, I mean, not the vision, I mean, his voice. He just said, hey, listen, I want you to help the veterans. Now, God, I said, God can tell people things, and people can ordinarily just take it and run with it. And what God probably is saying, listen, you know, give it, you know, I'm going to show you this and that, some more things, and give it a couple of months or give me a year, give it some time, and I'm going to show you a program I want you to do to help the veterans. Um, but sometimes we just say, oh, God, want me to help the veterans too, so let me go. And let me go, and then in your own way, you're trying to, to do something like that. So, like I said, that's when people usually, and what will end up happening eventually, you know what will happen, you'll try to go do it. And some things won't work or some roadblocks get in the way. And then God will come to you eventually and say, hey, listen, uh, God will come to you and say, hey, listen, uh, I do want you to do that. But that's a little bit later. I, I, listen, I want you to go do this and that. And you don't worry, you're going to get that. I'm just, you know, I showed you this. Or I just told you this. But you're going to get it done. But not like you think that fast. You see, there's a little bit more to it. And see, that's how business is of God. A lot of time what people do. Like I said, when God don't talk to a person completely, that person end up in just no, in nothing. That person end up with nothing. That person would just end up like, hey, man, I lost my wife, and it's over with. It's gone. It's like, well, what happened? Well, God told me, no, God ain't tell you nothing because it's over with. It's done, and ain't getting it back, and you ain't getting it back. It ain't God. 
It was never God doing that. But see, people sometimes say that. Well, you know, God, you know, uh, you know, God had told me to, to do this here and um, to start this here, and, and, and it didn't work out at all. Then you have some people, the exception, who actually God didn't tell them, but they start something that works. You know, they start something and it actually works. And then it works a lot more than, you know, it really works. And they automatically start to think that it's working because God wants them to work. It works. And then all of a sudden, you know, they're just going and going and going. And as they're going and going, they're growing and growing. And that, and they're getting so far away from God, it ain't funny. Then they start serving the idol God because God never even said that to them in the first place. And, and we see this happen a lot of time with people where they keep saying, well, God want me to do this. And God want me to do that. And those things are unholy, unrighteous things that God will not allow. But you, they believe this. And they go into these way of lives, and they believe that God is blessing this, and this is what God wants. And they're so delusional because they've been successful and they're rising high and they got people famous and or people following behind them and uh, of their fame or whatever it could be. And they think that God is blessing me with this. This is magnificent. When this is abomination of God and this is so far from the truth, God won't nothing to do with this. He ain't touching this, but they believe that because, I don't, you know, they believe that. You see, and, 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 and this is what... The problem is, you notice that people don't understand the devil blessed people too. Look at look at look at Saul in this story. Notice Saul got blessed in this story. Notice Saul got blessed in this story, sorry, because he got the money, man. You see, the, he, what he did was wicked, and what the people did was wicked. He did was wicked, and you know what happened? He got the money, man. But all of a sudden, he got the wrath of God coming now, and so as quick as he got that money, man, as quick as he finna get it tore down. And that's what happened to people. See, they, they got, the, you know, I got the marriage. Oh, and, and, and all of a sudden, here it's coming down. God didn't tell you that. Oh, I got the business. All of a sudden, boom, it's, it's, look, just that fast, it's, it came from out of your hands because that's not God didn't tell you that. And when you went did that, and then here come the wrath of God. Here come, you see, all of a sudden, here come, you build this monument up because the devil didn't bless you. Now, all of a sudden, here come the wrath of God. You got, you got the business, though, but you couldn't hold it. Just like Saul, he got the monument, but he couldn't hold it. And that's the same thing goes on all through these things with people. You got you got the you got the company, you didn't couldn't hold it. You got the car, but you couldn't keep the car. You see, the God wanted you to even have that. You see, sometimes people wanna um they wanna run. You see, and like I said, when God shows you things and this is something I had to learn my own self, you know. And and, and like I said, sometimes people wanna run. You see, because the fact of the matter, God starts working in them, and, and they don't really know God at first. And this happens to a lot of people. They don't know how God do things. And they just start to try to do these things. And then they start trying to bring the world in. Like, let me bring in this guy. This guy's supposed to be a good a good person. He's supposed to be a, a specialist. He's one of the top guys. And then they'll start, then, then they'll say, let's bring in this person. He's a top guy. And then they'll start saying, God told me, God told me, I think, you know, God blessed me to bring me in with this guy. And you're thinking, okay, then all of a sudden that guy's one of the guys that, that screwed you over. That, that that guy that came in, uh, brought you in, you're thinking that I thought it was going to be a, this was a God sent, and it was a devil. But Shane, what happened to your discernment? It, it, it did not work. I thought this guy was a counsel, was coming in, and, and he was supposed to fix my marriage. But all of a sudden, it seemed like he was an angel, but all of a sudden he helped, he ended up ruining it. I thought this guy was coming in to help us save our jobs. I had no idea he really was coming in to, to cut them. See, that's what happened when people walking in foolishness. And see, this have to be preached. This have to be preached. Because, see, you know, and, and like I said, the first thing a simple person would do is they want to admit that they this person and they want to admit that they actually walked in this. They're going to go back and look for excuses. They're going to look for pity. They're going to look for some kind of rational anger to be angry. You see, like Saul did, he's, what are you talking about? Um, I did what God say. Well, what's the problem? I don't understand. No, 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 notice, notice he was willing to, to say God is a liar so he can be true. He was willing to say God was a liar so he could be true. I did do the work. Well, God said you didn't. Well, you, well, well, I did do what he wanted. Well, he said you didn't. So you willing to say he's a liar just to make yourself feel good. 
And like I said, it's the egotistical things of these people. It's it's the um see, it's the people that so far gone in their foolishness and their pride and, and to the point where they starting to be deceived in themselves. And they they got this mind state that, you know, no one they're gonna deceive me or or, or or you know what? And see, it takes those lessons. It takes those lessons like things like that to happen to people like that sometimes to bring them out. You see, um, it takes sometimes it takes sometimes people go through these sort of things to bring them out. If they can come out of it. Sometimes they don't want to come out. Sometimes the foolishness is so much. Sometimes they still refuse to follow God in his fullness. So therefore, God can show them a better way. People say, hey, God is in my marriage. Yeah, right. They'll say that. Yeah, right. Some people say that, and, and you know what? He ain't nowhere near the marriage. They figure they could just pray this and that. And that's all it is. And they're not seriously working on their marriage with him. People say, God is in my business. Huh? How you, uh, uh, or at my job. See, my point is, how can God be, how can you run the business out of God when you're not even running on God? <laughs> this is unbelievable. I'm going to run this business off of God, but I'm not completely submissive to God. I'm, I'm God business. I'm trying to do my own business. But therefore, automatically, this is what I'm, I'm doing. Now, if God told you to do this business, and that's, that's what he wanted, and that's his business, that's different. But you got people who want to so quickly to bring God into their foolishness because they want to do something that's apart from God. And when God tells them, I got something I want you to do, you still sitting around not doing it. When God say, hey, I want you to go out there and work on that project I told you to do. Why are you still waiting? I want you to go out there and preach in the streets. Why are you still ain't doing it? I want you to go out there and, and, and help your help your help your family and preach to your family, you still didn't do it. I want you to go out there and, and heal the sick. You still ain't doing it. But all of a sudden, God helped me run my business. I'm running it your way. So that, 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 that's foolishness in itself. And you know what? Those people sometimes so caught in, in the foolishness, like Saul, they so caught in the foolishness that they don't even see it. And that's why Saul died a fool. He died a fool. That's why David said, why did Saul die a fool? Like, see, you know, Saul died a fool. And the same thing he said about Abner. Abner was the same way. Abner, why he died a fool? They died fools. Died like a, a fool death. And it's the same thing here. You know, with people like this, some of them, they, you know what? They don't learn to submit to God because they're trying to keep God and keep what they're doing. And they want to keep on with this logic of, See, what I see is if I do this, I can keep that because I rely on God to keep it. And that's their mind state. I I rely on God, so that's what it automatically is. So, therefore, I can keep it. You see, and that's what happens to people, you know, all the time. Hey, listen, I got a mistress, and I've been relying on God to keep her away from my wife. So, therefore, I'm relying on God. So it's the same thing they're doing. They don't see it, but it's the same wickedness. Because when they came into God, that's the stuff they was doing. And then they're trying to still put that in the God. Well, you know what? I mean, even before I came into God, God, I was relying on God. See, I just didn't know it, but I was. So they can keep on holding on that stuff. Because the truth is, they do not want to sacrifice and they'll make any excuse not to sacrifice. That's the same thing. Those They'll make any excuse not to pick up a cross. They'll make any excuse. They'll pick They'll pick suffering out the world. Hey, listen, I got to suffer because I got to wait in traffic. Hey, I got to suffer because I'm this race. I got to suffer. They'll, they'll pick any kind of thing. But see, that's not suffering the way Christ wants you to suffer. And see, they'll pick up any, they'll make up any excuse not to do it. They'll make up any kind of excuse so they will not have to totally sacrifice. They'll make up any excuse not to sacrifice, not to give it their all. They'll make up any excuse they can find.
that rich man, you know what, at least I have this respect for him than I do with people like this, is that at least the rich man understood that I'm not willing to do what Jesus asked. See, I'm not willing to make that sacrifice. I'm not willing to do it. He just walked off. You see, at least he was honest with himself to say, oh, okay, well, see, I tried to justify myself. Now I know I can't. And now I see that I'm going to have to walk away from all these things, whatever he's rich in, in abundance, not make excuses and stuff. See, you, you, see what I try to tell you. People like this, they start looking for excuses. They're looking for uh, weaknesses, and, 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 and they're looking for something. Oh, well, well look at Joe. What he can say? Uh, he, he, uh, he, he do this. What Phil can say, Phil, Phil look like that. There's a lot of people say this, but they don't look at this, that. See, see, he's looking for things. And he's judging in the soul, you see, because the truth is he don't want to have to be the one to make the sacrifice. As long as he can live in them lives, he's going to keep doing it. And see, he's not going to go no further. Because he don't want to make the sacrifice. And when he don't realize, he's walking in foolishness, and he's heading for foolishness. And if this stuff like this, if the, if he ain't already had a head-on collision already, he's on his way to another head-on collision. It would be the same outcome. Or she, or, or she it will be the same outcome. But you have some of these people that refuse to want to come out and do things the right way and confess that, you know what, that is me. That is, to, that is me up and down, and I need to change, and I need to actually get with God and say, God, I want to make this sacrifice. Well, they don't want to do that. No, they don't want to really do that. They want to make what sacrifice they feel is acceptable. They want to sit back and analyze what they feel is the suffering of God without knowing what the suffering of God, without asking the Holy Spirit, not looking in the Word of God and understand what the suffering is. They want to go around and look. And make excuses. That's like, look at the Trinity. The Trinity of Israel is the perfect example. The Trinity of Israel coming from what the world is, what we live in. They coming from, okay, a certain form of, I mean, a slavery. Where here's this slavery. That's, it's just, it's a whole nother kind of slavery. And it's pretty much the slavery of the world. Well, they're sitting up there, have to worry about working. Uh, they, they second, third class citizens, slaves. They getting the leftovers. They, they're getting picked on, not getting doors open because of their race or what they are. They're getting all this kind of suffering. They're getting whipped. They're getting worked to death. They're getting messed over. They're getting, uh, um, you know, unappreciated. They're dying. Uh, they're not getting the health care they need. They're not getting the nutrients or whatever they need, nutrition, the education. They're not getting none of this. That suffering was terrible. They kept crying out to God over their suffering. But all of a sudden, when they got to God, and God took him through his suffering he wanted to go through, it was a complete different suffering than the world suffering. And when they had to go through it because they had to rely on God, and then it's three, four days, you got to rely on God to eat, you got to rely on God to this, you got to rely on God to that, you got to do this to God to that. You got to see, when they, when they had to start doing those things, and God had to put them through things, they said, we don't want this stuff. We would rather, rather go back to the world suffering. We would rather go back so they're not open up the doors for us. We would rather go back so we ain't got education. We would rather go back so they treat us like trash. We would rather go back to that than to follow God. And that's the same thing people do. They making up excuses. See, I, I, they won't open doors for us. Uh, that's the suffering you're looking at. So you, you want to stick in that suffering instead of getting in line and walking in that wilderness and going with God and go to that promised land, that's suffering. See, they, they want to make an excuse not to come into that because they want to simplify being in Egypt. And this is what happens a lot of time with people. I hear people say all the time, I, you know, I do whatever God wants me to do, then do it. Then do it. You want to do what God wants you to do, then why are you sitting on the block? See, see why are you sitting on something when you know you should have been doing something? Why are you still wasting time when you waiting for tomorrow, oh, one day, when it, today is the day. I'm still growing. Uh, for as you know what, uh, you know I'm still learning, right? I'm still uh, uh, God know my heart, right? And then run from somebody when they speak judgment to you. When somebody speak the judgments of God, when somebody speak this truth to you, 
and then they run, make excuses. People do people oh people do people say stuff. See those ministers like that do that because that they want to bring a person down for some reason. They 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 want to do this because they they mad. Uh, they this. They 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 you know whatever. Uh, they they want to feel good about themselves. Uh, 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 they want to do this. They, they you know whatever. The rich man could have told Jesus, you know what Jesus, uh, you just saying that to me because you want me to be poor as you. You just want me to be poor as you. You want me to be poor like you. You want me to walk around uh, with no money in my pocket and have to depend on God. You want me to, to have to maybe suffer beatings. You may want people to throw stuff at me. You you want me to go through all this stuff, devils and demons and stuff. You you want you want me to go through all this here persecution. That's why you're saying that to me because maybe uh, and Jesus is saying, yes, that's what I'm saying. Follow me and take the cup and pick the cross. Yes, I want you to go through this. Paul tell you, he said, if you suffer with your error Christ, if you, you, you know, your error Christ, and you will reign with Christ if you suffer with him. So, yes, he wants you to do it. Why? Because he wants you to reign with him. But all of a sudden, the man of God come out and start preaching this here to people. Because why? He wants the same thing. But they but you get people get this mentality sometimes. Oh, he mad. Oh, he want us to be this. He 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 want he, he wanna kill us, see? He wants us to die. So he wants us to die. He wants me to be poor. He wants me to be relying on this and God. He he wants me to seriously do see, they have all this mentality, excuses they making up. That's what they said about God. You know, those things that, that I just said, what they said about God. You, Moses, you brought us out here to die. See, they thought the same thing God was doing to them. That's the same thing I'm saying. I ain't saying that, but what God's saying. That's the same thing that they were saying about him. You brought us out here to die. You trying to kill us. You trying to starve our kids out. You trying to take everything from me. You trying to have us out here homeless in the wilderness. See, you, 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 you leading us nowhere. Where's the milk and honey? Where's the... See, notice that's the same thing that they're doing. Same exact thing. They're making up all excuses in the world. Moses, you evil. Moses, you this. Moses, you that. Moses, you jealous. Moses, you that. Moses, this, 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 anything they can come up with to keep on with their foolishness. Whatever they can hold on to. Moses, you know what? You're just one of those people that want to come out here and kill us to make you look to make you look better, make us follow you to make you look good. Whatever excuse they want to make up to themselves to keep them from doing the work of God, or going through the process that God has for them to go through, so that before they can reign with Jesus in eternal life and oneness. And that's why, you know, like I said, that's why Saul lost his spiritual calling. Saul lost his spiritual calling, you see, because he lost his kingship for eternal life, uh, everlasting covenants being a king, meaning a reign with God forever. He lost it because of his foolishness. And that's the kind of damage foolishness can do. very deceitful you know we talk about the seven spirits here and from the seven spirits from Balaam to you name it the Malachite everything Philistines no matter what it is the spirit of foolishness is more dangerous than all of them all of them need her she's the foundation that they did every, every listen she the foundation of everything they build and on notice that notice that Christ is our foundation Foolishness is their foundation. Foolishness is the foundation that everything, all that stuff built on. It's a whole country built on foolishness. All you got to do is sit there and pay attention to it. It's foolishness. It's foolishness. And that's what everything built on. Notice how a country like America built on fear. Everything is fear and deception, which is foolishness. 
But you notice that the hitchhike spirit needs foolishness, so therefore it can get in its deception and its fear. Same thing with the Amorite. The Amorite wants to rule over the people. He want to have the people working for him. He want to have people under him. He want to rule over the people. Notice how it needs foolishness for a person to do that because it got to keep people from the truth. It got to keep people believing that he's higher. It got to keep people believing he's a, he's a problem solver. He got to keep people believing all these things that he's some, you know, angel that came down from heaven. He got to make you believe all this stuff. But he needs foolishness to set the way. Jebusite, uh, he, he, he needs foolishness. How else are you going to keep on bullying people and, and bullying people and enforcing the Amorite laws and everything? Well, how are you going to keep this going if you don't have foolishness in there? He needs foolishness to run wild. He needs it. Without foolishness, he can't work. Gergeshite needs foolishness. So you need people to be obsessed with, with, with the earth itself, with, with the science, with the this, with the that, to, to just worry about those things and, 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 and forsaking God and forsaking their spirituality. Because they can't put their spirit in the test tube. And so, therefore, forsaking it. Why? Because it's foolishness. All those spirits need foolishness. People to follow Jezebel. Jezebel needs you to be a fool to listen to her. And and, and and greed represent that fool that she's looking for. Because greed will lead a person into that. Foolishness. That's like Gehazi. If you go to chapter uh, Second Kings, go to Second Kings chapter five, verse nineteen. Look at Gehazi. Gehazi name means lack of vision. His name means lack of vision. Lack lack of a vision. He have no vision at all. I mean, he can't see what God sees, and that's why him and Elias had problems because he couldn't see what God see and Elias could see, and that's why he ended up being greedy. When Elias did not take the money from the Armenian, or some translation may be the Syrian, when he did not take that money from them, because God did not want that to happen, he wanted to do it. God wanted it to be done as a gift, but what happened was that he took it. He'd say, no, I can't let this man get away with this. He's not going to get away with something. This something He just had a miracle like this in his life. I'm not going to let him get away scot-free. Now, see, he lost vision because greed, his greed, he had no vision. And he went down there and got himself cursed with leprosy for, you know, forever. His generations of his family going down all with this disease because of his foolishness, because greed got in and he got foolish. The same thing if we go to chapter, we go to Acts chapter five, verse one. Remember um, Ananias, Ananias and uh, Sapphira. Remember her, remember them, where they sit there and seeing the Holy Spirit doing miracles. Everybody else trading food. Everybody else coming together, and for some reason, they seen prophecy happening. Uh, all these things are going on. For some reason they thought that see greed got in there and made them believe that they can actually lie to the Holy Spirit. See, they've seen all that power of God, all the things happening. But that greed got in. You know why that greed got in? Because everybody else was giving. Notice that everybody else was doing what? Selling everything and giving everything, and they was holding back. And that's what's wrong with these people right here I'm speaking of. See, everybody selling everything, everybody giving out everything, selling out. But they're still trying to hold back and make excuses for this is why I do this, because God was... Well, I, I've been, with, listen, he was doing it then. No, 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 see, keep, keep telling yourself that. But see, you're going to have to sacrifice Ananias, Sapphira. You're going to have to, you're going to have to give it all. You can't play do it. You're going to have to give it all. And see, they was trying to hold back. And they think they can sit there and lie to the Holy Spirit or a person with the Holy Spirit in them. They sit there and think they can lie and keep making these excuses. And then they get mad when that person start to speak. And then they start to say, I need to get away from him and separate Get away from me. Depart from me. Because I can't take it. And see, just like they got, just like they got buried out there, they going to get buried out there. And they already getting buried out there. Their marriage is getting buried. Their, their uh, uh, jobs are getting buried. Their, uh, their, you know, their, their, their business is getting buried. Just like that, they're getting buried.
because they choose to hold back and walk around in foolishness because they think that they're going to have some kind of, they're trying to still play both sides of the fence. They're still trying to do, they're they still trying to hold on to them proceeds. Disgusting behavior. It just is, and they should be ashamed. And I pray to God they are ashamed. And I pray this brings shame to them because they need to be ashamed for a good thing, though. See, to be ashamed in a good way, a way that's going to change, a way that's going to twist in them and, and cut them to the quick, to cut them to the, you know, cut them to the quick, that's going to hurt, that's, 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 that's going to cut through that hard shell to get them moving in the right direction. You see how people like that, that we see we have out there like this, and, 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 and foolishness is taking advantage of this. And like I said before, if, if a person is going to reject this and they know this them, then that's, hey, you know what? That's all right. And you know what? Let 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 let, let that like, you know how they say a fool and his money is departed. Well, you know what? It'd be the same thing again. It'd be a fool, and he and everything else will be departed from what ain't already taken from him will be taken. See, and and what haven't been taken, he will have nothing in the end. And see, that's that's how that's going to happen to him. Because he refused he refused, he refused to listen to the word of God. He he chose to simplify. He chose. To, to 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 make his own analogy of it and choose not to sell out and go deeper. He choose not to sacrifice. He choose to keep on making the excuse so he don't have to sacrifice. And see, this is one of the greatest foolishness that I see this foolishness is using on a lot of individuals. And this is why I was led to preach this. And this is why this is strong teaching. Because it need to be, it need, you know, this need to, to open up the eyes of people who walk in like this. And I pray God bring the people to this who need to hear it all over the world to hear this. And see, that's 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 some of the things that, like I said, happen to them. They 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 just trying to hold back the proceeds, and it's just they they they're just fighting. They're just fighting. They're fighting against God, and they don't even see it. They just fighting against the truth, so they can hold on. And I tell people all the time. You know when a person is not walking in the spirit or understand things of the spirit, they don't want to judge anything. They'll say, well, I don't want to talk about that guy. You know, I don't want to say nothing about what he's doing. I don't want to tell that guy that. And uh, of course you don't want to tell a guy that. Of course you don't want to have to be the one to judge that. Of course you don't want to tell that person what error that they have. Of course you don't want to. Of course you don't want to do that. Because you don't want to cause what you think is strife. But it's a such thing called a good strife. Well, people do what you call spiritual investigating. And that means when you're doing spiritual investigating, that's what that goes down to. Spiritual investigating is to find the truth about something. If a person want to know the truth, then you find the truth. If people want to hate the truth, then they hate the truth. And as a person that's not doing it out of retaliation, revenge, or envy, as a person that's doing it with the love of God, because they want that person to understand what the truth is, because that person walking around with such blinders on. So I pray this, this message. Um, as a blessing uh, to everyone to come on. I pray this is a message that you can build on, and this is a message that stir you up. And it stirred you up, and, you know, if you know people like this, this is something 
that I pray that you go with God and go deeper into this, deeper into this, because, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's a foolishness that's going on and foolish and, and, and folly is all in these people. And she's all in these people, hugging them, loving on them. And they don't even understand what's going on because they refuse to learn the truth about God. They want to have a false sign of fearing God. And so for all the people that want to come out to get prayer, you can always go to www.kingdomjusticeleague.com. That's www.kingdomjusticeleague.com. And I will advise you to go to kingdomjusticeleague.com, the radio uh, the radio website, to to leave your emails. Um, the emails because you got any questions. Uh, right now, um, so we got some stuff going on at GarlicLegs. Uh, dot org. So I don't. I'm not going to be able to get your email. Um, so therefore, I won't be able to get it right now. So it's best for you to uh, to go www. dot dot com to leave your email. For all the people that usually go out to Gmail, I know they usually send me some email anyway, and Cross TV and everything else. Um, this is uh, oh yeah. For all the people who come out being born again. All I ask you to do is to repent. All you have to do is to repent. And uh, we're just, you know, all you have to do is repent whatever you, uh, you know, whatever you know you have done and pray to Jesus that the Holy Spirit will bring it out of you, um, you know, the insignificant things. Because, see, that's one of the things about, you know, what we were talking about tonight with these people. They're stuck in Zora. You remember Lot uh, in Zora. Lot said, you know what, God was going to destroy all five places. But, see, Lot went to Zora, and he couldn't, he, he couldn't go no further than Zora. You see, he had to leave Zora there. And what Zora means is small and insignificant. That's what it means, small and insignificant. See, Lot thing was he 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 left Sodom. He left the bigger things. He left that, but he couldn't go too far. So he 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 went to Zora. So he 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 kept the little small insignificant things that he was gonna need. He said, I can't make it. So he, he the little small insignificant things he kept. And that's what happened to people sometimes. God is trying to run you out of Sodom. Sodom, he's trying to take you out of this place in judgment. He's trying to take you out of this place, uh, you know, and put you in the ju- his, his judgments and, and, and take you to a whole other level. And, and you know what? You still want to hold on to Zora. These insignificant things in your life that you keep wanting to hold on that you don't want to let go and don't want to give all to God. The insignificant thing. I, you know, I just, I, I just watch this. I, I just, I just go do that. Uh, you know, I, I, I just, this, I just, uh, this stuff, this little insignificant things that that they don't even really pay attention to. They think it's not a big deal. They didn't told themselves it's okay. They didn't came up with some kind of excuse. Uh, you know what? Um, God know my heart. Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm still learning. Oh, you know what? I, I, I'm, you know, you know, I, I, you know, I'm just that. I tell people by losing their excuse, I'm still learning. Um, to keep doing wicked and keep doing what they're doing, I tell them what, once you know the truth and you know it's the truth, after that, you know it's sin. So once you know it's the truth and you keep doing it, you know it's sin. There's just no sense of just talking about it. You think you can just hold know it's the truth, but just say, oh, whatever, and you keep holding on to this sin. And this is what people think they can really do. They think they can do these sort of things, and it's going to be, it's going to be fine for them to do. And it's not. It's not. But they believe it is. Because they don't like the judgments of God going forth, and they look at somebody bullying them. Uh, it's like Paul when he was talking to the Galatians. They looked at him like you bullying us, you know, like you know, uh, and they didn't like him because he told them, them the truth. Now they didn't like it. It can't be like that. But like I said, the insignificant things, you see, that's what you're going to ask the Holy Spirit to pull out of you, the things that you don't see. You see, and 
we're of course going to play a commercial for you. For all the people that want to come out and want to donate or give an offer, you can always can. Um, just go to uh, the same thing, www.guardielex.org or www.kingdomjusticeleague.com. Um, we go to there. Uh, they're both going to be the same thing. So uh, when you go to donate, so you can just go there. Uh, until tomorrow, well, actually, I'm not going to be back the rest of this week anyway. Um, that's right, I forgot until tomorrow. This is today's last day. But I'll be back Sunday at the right. I should be back Sunday at the right time. Um, I should be back Sunday uh, at 7. I wanted to change. God, I've been asking God which, which time he really wanted me to do. So if we're doing the spirit, we were going on different times because the times we've been doing actually been going with what we've been doing. And so um, we'll be back Sunday. And uh, I believe the time I said God wanted me to go it was 7 o'clock. So that's something that we're going to have to go and, and get into um, that time. Um, you know, 7 o'clock, the seven spirits of God and everything else. And I want everybody to understand that that's something that everybody has to understand has to become one. Uh, seven must become one. And it's all over the Bible. And that's something that everybody got to understand and get. And and then you see seven, you see three, and, we, and you put and you add them together. You got 10, you got ties, you got 10%. God wants you to spiritually tie. Tie yourself. That's what he wants. He wants your first choice. He wants all of you, not just not just not just money. And I'm not telling people they ain't supposed to pay their physical tithes. No, but what I'm telling you, that's not all he wants. If you think that's all you're giving, that's not that's not what he completely wants. He wants all of you. He wants you to tie itself. Jesus tied himself on that cross, and that's why he said, "Pick up your cross." See, he wants you to tie yourself. So to Sunday, we should be back Sunday at 7 o'clock. Um, until then, blessing and peace be to you. This is Courtney Jones, and I'm out. Hey, everyone. We're going to take a quick commercial break that is sponsored by God Elect Ministry. Hey, everybody. This is Courtney Jones from God Elect Ministry. And for all the people who want to receive Jesus into their heart and their Lord and Savior right now, I want you to quote something with me. Now, we're, going to, we're going to go to Romans chapter 10, verse 9. It's Romans chapter 10, verse 9, and it says, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has risen him from the dead, you will be saved. And also go forward and say this, we go further. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession, confession is made unto salvation. Now, if you're a person right now who you believe, you receive Jesus in your heart right now, this ask him in your heart right now, you also, you also believe that he's sitting at the right hand of the fall. He's been risen from the dead. You also believe that he is Lord. Now, as you just had quoted that scripture, I want you to understand something. It's something called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is a gift that is given to everyone who believes this. Everyone who believes that Jesus has been risen from the dead, that his blood washes us clean. He is our Savior, and he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. As you confess that, I want you to understand that you can ask God right now for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it's given to every believer. Every believer who believes this, you, you, are, you are required to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is given to you as a gift. So remember, as you quote that, as you receive Jesus in your Lord, your Lord and Savior right now in your heart, as you quote this scripture, also ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.